Your body is like a business. It's designed to run at maximum efficiency all the time. And your hormones are kind of like the managers that run the show. Pick it up, Martinez. The second somebody slips up, stops working, or slows down, your hormones come in and they start to regulate things and return them to normal. If you're late, one more time. And that's basically what hormones do. They keep the status quo. Blood sugar too high? Send the insulin hormone. Metabolism starts to speed up? Send the thyroid hormone. Body fat drops? Leptin hormone. Your body does not want to change, and your hormones are what maintain your equilibrium. You're dragging ass out there, buddy. I'm docking your pay. This is why we plateau. And the key to plateauing or overcoming it is progression in anything you do, whether or not you're training for endurance, whether you're training for strength, whether you're training for uh, body fat loss, you have to be able to progress or else you will just plateau, such as especially the case in fat loss. You have to adjust. Now the hormone that we need to be concerned with when cutting fat is leptin. Leptin is our hunger hormone. All right, boys, that's lunch. It's stored inside of your fat cells. And as you lose body fat as a result of being in a caloric deficit, your leptin levels are also going to drop. When your leptin drops, your metabolism is going to start slowing down as well. Say for instance that you maintain your body weight at 2500 calories, then you decide to go on a diet. You cut your calories to 2000 now, so you put yourself into a deficit. As a result, you lose some initial body fat, but after about a week, your body starts to realize what's going on here as far as being in a deficit. Yeah, I see what's going on here. Shut it down. This is called a plateau. Your hormones have essentially figured out what's going on and corrected it by making 2,000 calories the status quo. That is now your equilibrium. It's not going to burn anymore. It wants to stay at that amount. So how do we avoid this from happening or how do we get out of it once it has? Well, essentially we have to spike our leptin levels to make sure that our metabolism doesn't crash on us. And also we want to resaturate our muscles with glycogen as they've been depleting uh, by dropping our carbs. To raise leptin, we need to refeed. Your leptin levels will go back up when your body can metabolize glucose in higher amounts. Yeah, that'll be enough. Just, uh, just uh, keep doing what you're doing. So, we increase our carbs and our calories for the day, our leptin goes up, and we start the cycle all over again. As you get lower in body fat, your body is going to need more frequent refeeds and more aggressive refeeds. Now, how do I tell the difference on whether or not I should have a refeed day or I should have a cheat meal or have a cheat day? Well, this is a way that I've broken it up in my 12-week nutrition plan. If you're in your first month of dieting, weeks one through four, I would say incorporate a refeed day where essentially you up your carbohydrates by 50%. This is gonna raise your calories, but not by too much. It's gonna do everything your body needs. Now, if you're in your second month of dieting, I say incorporate a, a cheat meal. Now, go about your regular daily calorie intake, track your macros, do whatever you're doing normally. However, take a meal and throw in something uh, that's potentially high in carbohydrates that's gonna uh, really satisfy your hunger and don't worry about feeling guilty about it. Weeks eight to 12, I throw in a cheat day where I don't even count my calories. Now, at this point, you should have a really good sense of where you're at in body composition and how many calories you're, actually your body needs. So what this doesn't mean is to completely go off the deep end and run a new, the sweet factory and binge on everything you see. That's going to set you back way too far. This does mean don't worry about counting your calories. Still eat relatively clean how you normally do. However, increase your carbohydrates a great deal as much as you need to spike your leptin levels and to satiate your hunger. As a result, you're going to have a slight increase in weight, uh, a lot of which is going to be water retention. However, you're going to rev up your metabolism. It's going to more efficiently burn calories in the weeks to come. I kind of like to think of this like taking seven steps forward in a week and one step back. However, this is a very necessary step when you're dieting down. The last point I want to make is when to do your refeed days. Now, I've heard people uh, doing refeed days on, on high intensity days like uh, like back day or leg day uh, because uh, to make up the difference in, in their caloric intake. They're eating high calories, so they want to burn more calories so they don't potentially uh, put on some, some weight in that refeed day. However, I completely disagree with this. Um, I think the opposite needs to be done. Now, your body's going to get used to burning a lot of calories throughout the day and running on few calories. Now to optimize those hormonal resets, we need to reverse that and up our calories and decrease our caloric burn for the day. And as a result, 
The next day, you're gonna wreck shit inside of the gym. You're gonna feel full, your skin's gonna be tight, you're gonna look bigger, not as flat, not as depleted, and you're gonna start burning calories more efficiently instead of plateauing. You're gonna steadily lose weight, spike your leptin, steadily lose weight, spike your leptin. This is gonna reduce your plateau time, and this is gonna increase your fat loss. Localfitness858 at gmail.com. Also, my 12-week nutrition plan is going to be available very, very soon. Clients will receive a free local fit t-shirt and the shipping will be free of charge. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.